Tech Cocktail Conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. Hi, I'm Peter Corbett. I'm the CEO of iStrategy Labs. We're a digital agency that builds online and offline experiences for Fortune 500 brands. Uh, so a lot of people ask about what are your rituals for creativity or how do you gain those really interesting insights and turn them into fascinating ideas that you can bring to life for a brand or, or for yourself. Um, I always like to tell people it's really important to empty your head of everything before you endeavor to really come up with a great concept. And the reason why is because you're just, it's a whole bunch of clutter in there. So some of the easiest ways to do that, maybe this is cliche, but go work out, go on a bike ride, meditate. Um, just really be quiet and s settle down for a bit. And once you do that and you clear your head, let that thing you want to focus on come into your brain first. And then it'll fill up your entire brain. You're like, oh my God, I'm, like, I'm using the full force of my mind to come up with a great concept. Um, and then what you do is maybe you, you're sketching, maybe you're writing, uh, set it down, walk away, come back to it an hour later, come back to it a day later, whatever that is, and, and let it marinate, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to connect those initial concepts to other stimulus around you, right? You might walk down the street, you might see you know, a 35-year-old mother with a young child, and you're like, oh, that's my target audience, and when she was going to Whole Foods, she did this, and the idea that I had is perfect, and what if we, and that's when you start to have really good ideas that influence the way that people experience their world. Um, I don't believe that ideas are generated by sitting in a room and brainstorming. Uh, at iStrategy Labs, we don't sit around and brainstorm. You might think that we do. Uh, we're a creative agency. We come up with all sorts of crazy concepts for clients. What we do is we have lightning pitches. Um, a strategist will put all the parameters down and tell the entire company, anyone in the company, um, here's the budget, here's the time frame, this is the objective, these, this is how our success is gonna be measured. Uh, you have to come up with a two to three minute pitch and pitch in front of the entire company, and those best ideas, I as the strategist, I'm gonna to start to shape into the most relevant approach for a client, which is different from you know, thinking about sitting around in a room with six or seven people just you know, throwing spitballs at the wall or whatever. Um, and we found that that's a really good way to go about it. Um, the word rituals, that was a part of the question, is a, it's an interesting word. I don't know that I've ever done the same thing twice. So I think ritual is probably the opposite of how um, I approach creativity and idea generation. Um, so yeah, that's my answer. The best advice I can give an entrepreneur with regard to how to land a big client um, would be first and foremost, they should talk a whole lot more than you do, right? You should just be listening and listening and listening and listening. And when they stop, ask them a question so they talk more. They're going to talk and they're going to talk. And in the least, if the only thing that happened in that meeting was they talked a lot, they're going to feel like, oh my God, they really listened to me. And they're so smart. And you might not have said anything, like really, but through the course of that, they're getting through this process of making sure that you understand where their pain points are and you're starting to understand that. And based on the thing that you do, whatever the product or services that you have, you can start to match it up with that pain point. And you just inject these little nuggets of amazingness where you say, oh yeah, based on the thing you said about having really difficult internal HR processes, well, it's amazing that our product does exactly that. And I would say do it really subtly. Some people oversell and they're like, well, let me tell you about feature number 500 million thousand. You're like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Just sit there, pepper them with really interesting things, get them talking, really, really listen. And over time, you're going to develop a good rapport with that potential big new customer. And then they write that check. The problem is when they write that check, does it crush your entire world? Because sometimes it can. And if you work with, with big clients like we do uh, and you're a small company, uh, you don't always want a battleship to come into a small port. So um, be careful about that, but you have to make sure you absolutely deliver or else you're going to have a terrible reputation and you're not going to have a great business. You know, over the past year, online video, I don't think has changed dramatically except for maybe one area. I find that the quality of production is increasing much faster than I expected. Um, you'll see really beautiful, you know, two to three minute mini documentaries. Uh, that were shot on you know an awesome uh, Canon D800 or something crazy like that and took the uh, videographer and editor like 48 hours to do it and it looks like it was you know s cinematically lit and it was a half a million dollar production uh, when it was nothing it was someone who had a camera and it was just a fun little project uh, same thing with animation I think we're seeing I don't want to say the com commoditization of motion graphics but maybe to a certain degree we are 
um, which is all sort of a good thing for the consumers of that content. So people watching it, they have a better visual experience. Um, but the people who are commissioning that work, it's cheaper them to produce. The challenge is really for the artisans, uh, the motion graphic uh, artists, and also the videographers. Are they going to be able to generate enough fees to, to do that kind of service? Over the past year, um, mobile clearly continues to grow. I, would, I think it's something around 85% greater mobile web traffic, 147% more time spent in mobile applications. Um, it was interesting, you know, probably four or five years ago, we were still saying this is going to be the year of mobile. Um, it's no longer that. that. Mobile has arrived. Mobile is now the dominant force in so many conversations that we have and so many approaches um, that marketers are deploying for whatever objective they might have. Um, what I'm interested to see is when do I get to the point where I abandon my laptop entirely? Like, I'm pretty close to that, um, but I can't quite get there. And is it just, is it two years? And it's like, wait a second, all I have is a, an iPhone and an iPad? Wow, that's, that's a totally different experience entirely. Um, it's my job, I think, every day to try and project the future a little bit, maybe not too far, because if you go too far when you're operating a business, you might build something that no one ever wants to buy, and then you're going to go out of business. Um, so the view that I have is generally like this sort of two to three year window. Uh, and within a two to three year window, we do something called social machines where uh, we hack the physical world using real time social data. You can take a tweet or a check in or a like. Uh, bring it in the real world and unlock a, a fridge with X number of check-ins, like what we did for GE, or, or make a, a cake talk uh, using tweets like we did for Ford. Um, three years from now, that is going to be commonplace. You're going to see social machines everywhere, whether they're the things that we build or something that everyone else builds. Um, what I'm really excited about, it's probably in that three to five year window, is what happens with the heads-up displays, whether it's Google Glass or, or whatever else. Um, I should be able to walk down the street and just see an ambient view of the information I have available to me, whether it's through open APIs that the city provides or other service providers like a Yelp or a Google or what have you. Um, that's all within the next three to five years. And at that point, when we're no longer lugging around computers and smartphones to get additional information about the places that we are, um, that frees us up as humans to do so many new things. So that will be incredibly exciting.